fine. Anyways, what did you want to talk about? <gasps> the Harlem Renaissance is very interesting. Well, I know just the girl to start this conversation off with. Florence Mills. See, the Harlem Renaissance was a period in our history of rebirth of art, music, and literature in the 1920s and 1930s in America, especially in Harlem, New York, and it had a whole new inspiration for it behind the idea of what the American dream was. It was a beacon of hope that filled many African Americans with its light and illuminated their culture in a whole new way. Born Florence Winfrey in 1896 in Washington, D.C., to former enslaved people Nellie and John Winifrey, Mills moved with her parents to New York City, New York in 1905. She paved the way for African Americans in mainstream theater, especially black female stars during the Harlem Renaissance. Born into poverty, Mills early on demonstrated a talent for singing and dancing, and under the name Baby Florence, she made her stage debut about age five in 1903, and her family moved to Harlem District in New York City shortly after that. She married Ulysses Thompson, a member of the jazz band known as the Tennessee Ten. And sadly, at the age of 31, Mills became ill with tuberculosis during a tour that included many performances. She died in New York City on November 1st, 1927 from an infection after the surgery. 3,000 fans attended her funeral in Harlem and thousands more saw her funeral progression as it moves through the black community. Florence Mills. <laughs> of course I named her. She was born to perform and she had an innate vocal talent. She moved to Harlem in 1903 and in 1910, she joined a traveling vaudeville act with her sisters. After returning to Harlem, she began performing in nightclubs. She had a big break in 1921, where she scored the lead in the musical Shuffle Along. She went on to do several other musicals, such as Plantation Review and Dover to Dixie. She truly paved the way for African Americans in mainstream musical theater and popularized syncopated dance and song. Finally, she worked on the musical Blackbirds. She took this musical to London and Paris before falling ill in 1925 and returning to America where she died. It was in this show she sang the song, I'm a Little Blackbird Looking for a Bluebird. This song became synonymous with Mills. It was a powerful protest song when sung correctly and Florence Mills used it as such. It references the Bluebirds of Happiness from the play The Bluebird. In the original lyrics talk about building fairy castles just like all the white folks do but it was later sanitized to just like all the other folks do. This powerful commentary on racism advocated for all the African Americans who were trying to find happiness in the face of hardship and discrimination. Furthering the fact that everyone deserved to be happy no matter their race, bringing about a new view in what the American dream could be, and should be. This record is now a celebrated jazz standard and lives on after Florence's death. <laughs> you can hear it playing now. Blackbird, you can fall a bluebird, too. Darling, did you see the show? Oh, Florence Mills was amazing, wasn't she? Did you know that she debuted with her sisters and was a pioneer in experimental dance? She improv today. Did you notice that she fell into the splits and played it off so that we could all have a little chat before going right back in? She even has 250 performances in this tour. Renewing an interest in dance, she proves that even African Americans have the freedom to move however they please. And they want to dress for this occasion. Wow, that's the bee's knees. Miss Mills was a star of the Harlem Renaissance. Her career was based around acting, music, and dancing, all arts that she performed flawlessly. Mills displayed her talent on Broadway, starring in the first successful all-black Broadway show in 10 years, Shuffle Along. Said musical is considered to be the catalyst for the Harlem Renaissance by many historians. Florence Mills was extremely influential because she inspired other African Americans to follow in her footsteps. She didn't do it single-handedly, but with her help, she opened the door for African American cultural expression through the fine arts. They had the freedom to bring their culture into the spotlight, and now the American dream, which had always been characterized by freedom, was extended to black people. Blackbird, you can fall a bluebird. Ooh.